I moved to Poland uh, in 2014, end of 2014, actually to take their position as a lecturer. And then I started slowly uh, starting uh, my own group and my own research uh, area. And actually that was the time that I started joining the Coast Action. So my research is around two main topics related to biomaterial science and to a small textiles, but also polymer uh, materials, nanofibers. So I have joined uh, during the time I was, uh, I'm here in Poland, um, three cost actions as an MCM member. Um, the cost actions related to biomaterials, uh, which is the first one, it's uh, Bioneca. Uh, there is also context related to the smart textiles and there is aerogels related to aerogels actually. So very different uh, topics in terms of material science and the applications of materials. Um, so joining these uh, actions actually allowed me to meet people with very different background, uh, people working in different um, applications area and allowed me to think uh, how my materials can be useful for very different applications. So uh, this way, I just wanted to say the cost action uh, actually helped me a lot in building the team, also the research area and, and looking for new perspective of the materials that I'm working with uh, for various applications uh, in terms of material science. So cost actions actually have a few uh, very useful tools uh, that can be used for young researchers, early career investigators. One of them, they are short-term uh, scientific missions. So I encourage my PhD student actually to join various teams at different groups and universities in Europe. They have possibility to work and see the laboratories, but also opens a new collaboration topics for us. They bring a new knowledge. Uh, they, it brings excitement for them uh, to, to do new things, to learn new things, uh, but also, uh, to uh, write a scientific papers in the topics uh, that they will help in their research career as they are at the starting. Starting as a lecturer at AGH University in Poland, I had to apply for many different foundings uh, to start my research uh, group and research topic over here. Cost Action uh, gave me a possibility to talk uh, with people and researchers not only during the conferences, scientific meetings, but also in the very different environment, in beautiful places in Europe, uh, to develop ideas. But I was also uh, discussing with them new ideas I have, for example, for the applications uh, in terms, for example, thermal management, uh, energy harvesting, that uh, I didn't have so much experience with. Uh, with experts in the field. And that allowed me actually to uh, build the project proposal that I applied for ERC starting grant within uh, um, Horizon 2020 funds. Uh, and actually I got it, but that was uh, a lot of help from people with different backgrounds discussing the ideas uh, and also the approaches, the scientific methods I wanted to use in, the, in these proposals to make it successful. 
In terms of my research career, course action uh, helped me uh, in the way that I started to collaborate with many distinguished researchers all over Europe. Uh, we um, managed through the work of a PhD student joining the groups for a few weeks, a few months, uh, to publish a few research papers. Of course, that's, uh, that shows our openness uh, to the different research approaches, but also shows interdisciplinary part of our research and it opens uh, new possibilities for applying for further research grants uh, to develop the, our ideas. My personal message is actually to talk with people and networking. It's very important for scientists to share the knowledge, share their experience. So especially for young people, when they start to really focus on narrow topics, it's important to develop new ideas and new approaches uh, to be successful in uh, science. So cost uh, actions are excellent tool to talk with people. Even sometimes at the conferences, we are very scared to ask questions. We are not sure how to do that. But for young people, if you join the cost actions, you have opportunities to talk in the, uh, let's say, different environment, like especially during the dinner, uh, during visiting uh, some nice uh, universities, but also some uh, cultural events. That's very different uh, situation that allows you to discuss um, these research ideas that sometimes develop new ideas and opens for you a lot of new opportunities uh, for your research and your further uh, career in science. The advantage of course actions are also based on uh, many young people and early career investigators joining those networks uh, as they have opportunity to learn from the very experienced researchers in the topic or key leaders uh, that they represent not only academia, but also industry. Another advantage of joining cost action is a gender balance. It actually encourages young women to join the cost action and share uh, their research profiles so they can really find the best people in the research topic they do uh, and collaborate with the best scientists in Europe and outside Europe. So when I was a master student, actually I did my uh, my master uh, study at Max Planck Institute in Germany. My supervisor, uh, a professor there, was wearing two different socks. And I thought, yeah, that's that's very weird. Why is he wearing? I think at the, because now it might be a fashion actually to wear different socks, uh, but at the time uh, it wasn't that popular. So, but one day, um, actually happened a few years ago when I went to work I had a meal, uh, in the restroom and then I noticed I have two different earrings and I said, oh my goodness, that's a sign I'm becoming a really good scientist because I do not notice things I do in the morning. That's the one story. So you see, um, um, yeah, maybe that's, that's, that's the information how your brain is occupied with very different things. So actually, you do not notice the standard things or the routine you do in the morning because you're busy with thinking about different research ideas or also maybe other research problems you have at work. So you, you do not notice the simple things you do in the automatic way at home or even sometimes at, at work. Um, another story. Another story uh, is about my friend. My friend uh, was saying during the lunch one day, uh, she was saying, you know, well, I'm, all my friends are not normal people. She's also a scientist. And I said, but I am your friend. Yes, you are not normal. And then I realized that actually what she said, it's really um, a true, <laughs> you know, interesting true that uh, many scientists actually, they are they're really addicted to science and they are not thinking in the standard way. So I really consider this as a, a compliment about being not normal or thinking really outside of the box, but it's not only thinking outside of the box. 
uh, in your work, in your research, in the science you do in the lab, but also it's generally uh, related to your whole life, your approach to life, your ideas, sometimes crazy ideas, or yeah, you think uh, outside of boundaries. And, and actually science is your life when you, when you become a scientist. So you, you fix it to certain things. So it really appears in your, in your way you behave, you dress up in a funny way or not funny way, or, or you don't care how you dress up. Uh, that's, uh, that's the appearance of science. So um, it becomes part of your life. Uh, the meetings via cost action gives you opportunity actually to meet friends, which is very important in terms of collaboration in science. Uh, we have possibility to talk during the various uh, cultural events, during the dinner with a glass of wine and discussing uh, science, but also uh, various life uh, things, problems, situations. And that gives you a possibility to, uh, to find friends which helps you to develop new ideas that you, ideas, but also collaborations that you never thought about. So you find people you like to collaborate with, but you also have friends uh, that you can ask for advice, for help, which is important in science and in any, any kind of work uh, that, you, that you have people you can trust. Our cost action actually started in a very strange way. It was, uh... We didn't really join as much as we, uh, me and a colleague decided to start a cost action. And it basically came about from conversations that we had about publications springing up all around the world in our field and nobody apparently knowing each other. So these were all independent groups working on almost exactly the same thing. Um, and it was kind of strange that nobody was familiar with any of the other groups so we basically thought it would be a great idea if we could bring everybody together so we don't step on each other's toes, so we can try and uh, collaborate on different things and uh, push the field together. So uh, we basically cold emailed everybody and said, do you want to start a cost action? Everyone was really excited and surprised to get an email from somebody random working on the same thing. And that's basically how it started. So I think in that sense, the cost action really just organically started from a bunch of people doing the same thing in different places and us just deciding, okay, let's just talk about what we do. And another thing I think that sort of uh, really motivated us to start this action and um, this, this conversation with a colleague at Imperial College was um, the idea that it's a very niche field. And so where we would present our results would be in very general conferences and almost all our talks would well 90 percent of the talk was explaining what the field actually was that we were doing and then we have 10 percent to explain the details the results to a group of people who didn't really understand them anyway and so we thought wouldn't it be nice if we could have a meeting where we actually go straight to the punchline and discuss that instead of giving this endless introduction um, and that's basically what the cost meetings became where no one had to explain what they were doing. We just explained exactly what we were doing. And I think that's what really um, was a big thing for, for us at least. Um, the most useful tools I think for us were, were probably the, the ones for arranging meetings and training schools. So I think um, the fact that everybody could fly and meet without worrying about expenses um, was a huge thing. and there was no other way you could justify going to such a specialized meeting um, in a different country, and especially for young researchers. Um, that was something, there was just no budget for that. If you're going to present, you're going to present at a big meeting somewhere. Um, so I think that really made it that all the people working in this field could actually meet in one place, um, something that wouldn't have been possible without the cost funding. Um, also important for us was the training schools. So not me in particular, but I think it brought a lot of people into the field. And so our training schools, they were very, they were very dense training schools for three, four days um, with hands-on sessions and lots of lectures. And they were always, we had way more applications than we could actually accept. 
um, and they were very sought after and people had to do long application processes so we can be very selective but i think everybody always really liked them so we we had one in heidelberg one in leon one in israel and the next one's going to be virtual um and i think they really were the most popular let's say and um, because we really could get students from all walks of life who wanted to get into the field and the sdsms were of course very important so we use them a bit a lot of other groups use them as well so that definitely helped in the in bringing people into to using this technique which is cost action was about um who wouldn't normally be able to and um, because there's no other grant which allows you just to go somewhere for two weeks to try something that may or may not work so i think that definitely opened a lot of avenues of research um both for us and for uh, several other groups cost has helped me i think in lots of ways that i think are hard to define or put your finger on so obviously knowing everybody working in the field and on a personal level um helps um uh, in terms of building many collaborations if i have a question in one particular area that i'm not that um that fluent in i know exactly who to talk to and i can just call them so i think definitely this sense of community naturally helps so um, when we hire phds or postdocs now i can write straight away all these groups that i know would have good phds and postdocs so i think i mean the most important thing is really just this personal connection that you develop with all the researchers working in the field um which is hard to sort of quantify it's just something that exists um in terms of grant applications yes we applied with lots of groups together um we got national grants we're applying for international grants so obviously these are things that wouldn't have happened without the post meetings or we actually discussed these um and yeah in terms of career i think well i don't know if costs to thank or not to thank i mean a lot of things it has helped um we've definitely gotten more into the medical field which was a big goal of the of our cost action and um, so i'm now affiliated with the medical university i have a uh, position here and a lab in the hospital as well and um, so i think a lot of connections that i built through the cost network actually helped me um, to get where i am now i guess our cost action i think is a it's a very nice cost action it's probably one of the smaller cost actions um meaning because it's a very, it's a very niche field so there's not really that many people and the community is very supportive so i think that's a that was a very positive thing about our action and it was very easy to always visit people working in in, in very similar fields in different countries um and it's changed students and postdocs visiting other labs so i think that definitely helped a lot of phd's and postdocs to actually um see how other labs work in different countries um and eventually even move there in some cases to to further pursue the studies a cost is i mean is of course a very prestigious grant it's not easy to get um and i think that definitely looks good on every cv um especially in our, in my case where i actually chaired the um the action itself um i think that definitely helped in in getting me to my current position um and it definitely sort of you get you get visibility in the community of course if you uh, if you have Uh, a leading role in one of these actions so i definitely would encourage it for young researchers because it really does open up a lot of doors and in several ways networking is is important for lots of reasons um one of the main reasons in our case is really to see because it's a very small field that we're working in and there's a lot of very, very particular problems um which overlap and the networking was in so much importance that to make sure that not everybody's trying to work on the same thing or trying to repeat the same mistakes so really if you have all these people in one room talking about what they're doing and um, you'll realize very quickly oh this guy tried this already we're not going to do this or he's already way ahead in this there's no point in starting this um and sort of everyone sort of can carve out their own niche in the field so that progress really goes uniformly forward instead of everyone fighting for one thing and only one person getting the paper and everyone else being disappointed and shocked. So I think in that sense it was for us it worked really well in the field in that everybody now knows where everyone else is and no one's stepping on anyone's toes and 
if they do, they talk to each other and things come out together or in tandem in some way. I think cost actions probably help my work the most in ways that I can't quantify. Just in the sense that I could actually have all these discussions with all these people with expertise in different areas of the field and talking about personal experiences, um, things that went wrong, things that went right, um, tricks and experimental tricks, theoretical tricks. Um, all of those things I think are, are essential for progress, otherwise you're reinventing the wheel every time. So I think that's probably those little things saved me the most time and the most headache um, and benefited me the most. Um, on a larger scale, yes, I mean, there's, there's grants that we apply for together and we send people to learn a particularly theoretical aspect to another lab. So I think that's definitely also beneficial from a very physical and quantifiable perspective. But I think personally, I would say it's these informal discussions that sort of really um, benefited me the most in the long run and in the short run. So COST has enabled us to apply for the grants, um, both national and international. So um, we've got one national grant now where we're actually working on COVID samples. So this is one of these urgent funding projects and definitely discussions and some collaborations within the COST network um, helped us. So I think um, it's definitely useful for applying for national and international grants, which both myself and numerous members of the cost action um, were involved in. So I think for our field, cost was essential in kickstarting the field because it is a very niche field. Um, it was very hard for it to get acceptance in the mycoscopy community. And I think cost really helped us take this from this obscure spectroscopy technique to something that the whole mycoscopy community actually knows now. Um, and that was, I think that wouldn't have been possible without cost. Um, the community really knows each other. They have their own sessions, they have their own conferences, and we were starting our own society based on this. So this is basically a continuation of the cost. Um, and this will be in our next meeting, which is outside of our cost funding. Um, we will have a society meeting and so it really established a field that wasn't there before. Um, and I think none of that would have been possible without cost. Um, we also uh, were awarded this cost innovator grant. So this is a continuation grant for one year um, through which we're building a huge database, which will even further the field into more industry um, and commercial applications. And so I think cost is still helping us um, build this to the next level where we can really say this is a standard technique and everyone should know about it. Um, so in that sense, I think cost really did this field a big favor. Now, I think cost is definitely for young researchers an ideal tool um, because you really get to meet a lot of other young researchers working in the same field as you and really discuss um, your projects on a very informal basis. Um, the funding from cost is very good in, in the sense that they cover everything to do with travel, um, and you really sort of find yourself in a community, um, which is essential in, I think, every scientific field um, of like-minded people, which, uh, which a lot of times is missing in larger conferences that you go to. Um, so for young researchers, I definitely would encourage them to take advantage of all, all the different tools from COST, especially the, uh, the plenary meetings, the main meetings, the training schools, and of course, um, the scientific exchanges. I mean, if that's, relevant to what you're doing and um, that's definitely um, a very useful uh, generous tool by cost so i think my advice would be use it as much as you can um, and don't be hesitant it's only a lot you can gain when it came to it i didn't just join a cost action I looked at the description of the program and I decided together with a colleague, also a friend of mine, who I did a PhD with almost at the same time. And um, we decided to apply for a cost action. It eventually got accepted. 
I then, then became chair. My friend, colleague, Martin O'Halloran became vice chair. And at the time we'd recently finished our PhDs in Ireland. I just got my first postdoctoral funding in Portugal and I was looking um, at different types of funding opportunities. There wasn't a lot of options at the early stage of my career back then. I was 27, 28. Um, so there was very little choices given that I just finished my PhD and also I didn't have a permanent contract then. So this was um, something that made me apply for a cost action at the time. Um, the other reason was that um, when we were doing our PhDs, we had observed that the research in our area was done independently by different groups. Um, they were all scattered around the world. Each of them was doing their thing, trying to advance the area. And we saw that the cost action would be a good opportunity to get a, gather people together to build a cohesive uh, community for the four years of the action. And this had many ripple effects and subsequent projects uh, working together and even another cost action with a slightly different topic of research. So all cost instruments were very useful uh, for an early stage researcher that I was. Uh, dedicated training schools in our areas of interest, all dissemination activities that we use to promote our work convened in special sessions in conferences around the world, they're all very important. I think one of the most useful ones for me personally was the short-term scientific missions. I went on three during the, the course of the action that I chaired. And I also recognized the importance of ITC conference grants, but unfortunately those were only available in the last months of the action that I led. But I see now that many young PhD students and young researchers, they, they've become very popular and they're very useful um, in the cost action that I now work as a working group leader. I was at a postdoctoral level when I was leading my action. So indeed, the training schools and the short term scientific missions, were, which I used to collaborate with other researchers in other labs. Um, those two tools were very important to advance my career. I gained knowledge and collaborate with those people to this day, even though my cost action officially ended almost four years ago. Um, so a lot of collaboration for sure. I am a true believer that together, one group of people or a community can achieve so much more than ha and have more impact compared to doing things by yourself. I come from a past of interna internationalization. So doing an Erasmus while studying for my degree, then doing a master's in a foreign country, moving to another country for my PhD. And since the area I specialized during my PhD did not effectively exist in Portugal before I joined my institution. And by the way, my Institute uh, for Biophysics and Biomedical Engineering was very kind to embrace a somewhat unknown area of research with a common interest of only breast cancer detection, a completely different modality. So as I was saying, because this area of research didn't exist in Portugal when I, when I joined uh, my institute, I had a very urgent need to establish working collaborations with researchers in other countries with whom I shared research interests. So I benefited greatly from these collaborations. I have participated in a number of co-authored co journal and conference papers, and also two books so far. I've also hosted a number of collaborators at my institution in Portugal and established very healthy and friendly collaborations with them. And this level of interna internationalization has been acknowledged by my colleagues and I've achieved a permanent position in Portugal at the age of 31, which is rather unusual in Portugal. I was awarded with the NFP7 Marie Curie Fellowship and also the cost action was accepted almost at the same time and both of them less than two years since my PhD. So the cost action lasted four years of intensive networking and collaborative work, which certainly helped me build my CV and 
ultimately I applied for the position that I have now as an assistant professor. It was a very tight competition with much senior colleagues, uh, but I guess that the potential that I showed to lead an action at such an early age, I was only 28 when it started, certainly leveraged my CV when it came to my evaluation. I have very fond memories of the lovely people that I met over the years. And most of the times I was the youngest one in the room. So it was, um, everyone was very friendly to me. Um, a funny story is that for a lot of our meetings, it was always raining, even Lisbon, which is meant to be one of the sunniest capitals in Europe. There was rain at all our meetings everywhere. And I think it only stopped when we went to Athens. Um, but nonetheless, when we were in Belgrade, this was June, very sunny altogether, but there was a huge storm and we were doing this uh, tour with a really funny guide, but we all ended up in a line under a very small roof waiting for the rain to pass before we could finish our tour, which we couldn't do because it was just raining too much. And then we had our social dinner and everyone was drenched. So it was quite funny. As a message for young researchers, um, I can definitely see the benefit of uh, PhD students to take, um, to take part in cost actions in taking leading roles, if um, at all possible and avail of all the cost action tools to advance their PhD and their studies. And I think that also once you've finished your degree, you're, um, you'll have a very good experience leading a cost action like I did. See if the, if the record of the youngest researcher is broken. <laughs> we had some interesting success stories of networking, not only of people, but also of material and equipment during our cost action. So two examples, uh, there was a group in France who developed a breast model and then they posted this breast model to different teams in Italy and China and Canada but all over the place I'm sure I'm forgetting many of the places this breast phantom traveled to and then each group would manage to test their own equipment with um, a phantom that was comparable among all institutions so that was quite interesting research that we did um, that we haven't seen in our research area before or even in others alike. The other interesting, another interesting example is, for example, I developed some breast tumor models in Portugal. Then I sent them to a company in France who tested their imaging device with these models. And then this equipment went to Ireland where some patient studies took place so it really shows how the networking um, worked not only with the people moving around, but also our actual uh, models and our equipment so that we could reach um, great research results. In 2011, I was an early stage um, postdoctoral researcher and I had just received my first research grant and that grant was focused on developing a new medical technology to detect early stage breast cancer. And one of the things that I was really conscious of as a funded researcher is that you have a responsibility when you receive the, this type of funding to make an impact on patients and improve society and improve outcomes for, for patients diagnosed with breast cancer. And so one of the first things we did in that project was look at groups nationally and internationally who had worked in, in this particular research space. And we saw that there was about 180 researchers worldwide working in this space, uh, but only a very small subset had ever tested their technology on a single patient. And only one had at that stage had tried to commercialize the technology. And if we consider the amount of funding that was going into this research, to me, it was very, very problematic that all of this research was not having an impact uh, in the clinic. So with a colleague, uh, Dr. Raquel Concesao, we said we should start a cost action so that those centers of excellence where they had managed to bridge that translational gap into the clinic, that we could 
learn from those centers of excellence and disseminate that knowledge to the wider network. So we established a cost action, which in the end had over 180 researchers from 24 countries coming together every six months and learning about how to do clinical trials, learning how to incorporate uh, the opinions and needs of patients into their devices and learning how to commercialize their research so that any research that was developed in the lab could make its way into the clinic for better outcomes for patients. So what impact did cost have on my career? Um, huge really in terms of learning from the best people in, in your field. So every six months we would get an expert, expert speaker um, or groups of speakers in and spend days describing uh, best practice, describing good science and describing uh, how to, to make that translational gap into the, into the clinic. Um, I went on then to secure, you know, further grants. So we've, within my lab, we've secured five uh, research grants from the European Research Council. Uh, we now have a team of 47 researchers working on 23 different medical device projects. Uh, but all of the while, the learnings from, from cost feeds into what we do. So we recruit our researchers from all over Europe and all over the world based on our cost network. We get the best people because we know who the best people are through cost. So 10 years later, it's still having an impact. Um, in terms of societal impact, we have licensed in the last five years, 15 medical device patents to medical device companies and our technology is now uh, you know, improving uh, patients' lives in areas like oncology, um, in areas like um, um, respiratory and areas like chronic pain. So we, uh, through the lab and through the support of Cost Action, we have been able to learn the process, but also recruit really good people uh, into our lab uh, through the network we've developed through Cost. So from a career perspective, the key learning from for me uh, through the Cost Network was that if you want to have an impact on patients, you really needed to engage with clinicians and with hospitals early on uh, in, in the process. So to reflect this, um, my position in the university here in Galway was the first ever position in the 150 years of history of the university that is between the uh, colleges of engineering and the colleges of medicine. So I sit between two colleges, which never happened before, but we lobbied for that because we said, if we need, if we need to impact patients, we need to have a link uh, with the School of Medicine and not be uh, purely an engineering research group. So my entire research lab moved out of the university and it's actually in the hospital. And so all of my team in the morning on their way to work past patients, past doctors and past nurses, and that gives them great motivation uh, to develop new technologies, but also um, really focuses the mind on that translational piece getting our solutions into the hospital where they can improve uh, patient care. So, so overall, I think, I think cost uh, has had a huge impact on our area. Um, I, think, I think what tends to happen in research is we have silos of excellence. So we have disconnected islands of really amazing people doing great things. Uh, and what cost allows us to do is to disseminate that best practice. So not only do we have four sites of research excellence in Europe, we have 400 and that's what COST does. And um, so I would be a huge supporter of the program uh, and I think its value cannot be uh, uh, overestimated. I have joined two COST actions uh, because of the scientific areas they cover uh, and the networking opportunities. My work includes veterinary epidemiology, economics and biostatistics. And I have a PhD in the field of mathematical epidemiology in animal health. And as I am the first to work in this field in Slovenia, my first cost action was one of the best investment of my time. Even though I have tried to regularly attend conferences and workshops in my field, there is a severe lack of funding for research in my country. So participating in cost action was hugely important and really useful. 
cost action allow me to stay in constant contact with experts from other countries, which not only benefited my PhD and my career, but also helps me to bring the best expertise and knowledge from abroad to our country. For me personally, the most important thing of any networking tool was that you also get a daily allowance. Salaries for young researchers in Slovenia are so low that you can hardly get through a month without someone helping you, or you have to live with several roommates. So the daily allowance money allowed me not only to attend the official event, but also to make normal contacts and socialize with my peers over dinner and drinks. I am involved in several projects, but I must say that for young researchers, only the cost actions offer possibility to really actively participate. In other projects, you can carry out certain tasks and you are not allowed near decision making. But in the cost action, you can really get involved. For example, in one cost action, I am a working group leader and science communication manager. This has contributed a lot to my soft skill development and professional growth. In my efforts, I have been supported not only by members of our cost action, but also by trainings and webinars provided by the Cost Academy. Through the cost action, I got to know leading experts and young researchers in my field of interest from across Europe and beyond. In my experience, the cost actions particularly attract enthusiastic and curious people, which gave me extra motivation for my work. Um, and it is truly inspiring to talk about your work and research with this kind of community. Uh, you also make contacts with experts who are almost always willing to help you or at least provide you the contact you need. And you can also find people to apply for other grants with. For example, my colleagues and I recently applied for a joint grant with a team from Switzerland that we met through the cost action. To all researchers who are at the beginning of their career or who doubt themselves, I would like to say that you can join a cost action even if you do not feel like an expert or if you think that your participation uh, would not benefit the project. If you are interested in the topic that an action is exploring and your work is at least partly related to the project, do not hesitate to, to join. You will learn valuable lessons about the topic and about managing a project. And you will also meet new people and you will do and make things that you now probably think you are not able to do. Uh, while you are learning and doing new things, you will also be able to uh, add value to the project. It does not matter what you know now, it only matters how much you are willing to work and learn. And do not be afraid to take on responsibilities and leadership positions because in cost action, you can always find uh, someone willing to help you. To young researchers from low income countries or those with financial difficulties, I want to say that there is a way up. Um, while you will not solve your money problems by joining cost action, you can get enough money to attend project meetings and workshops, and you can get grants to attend conferences, and you can also spend some time at recognized universities or institutions involved in your cost action. This way you will get valuable knowledge and access to important experts in your field, which will help you to find a better job in your country or open a door to employment abroad. Mm -hmm.